Tada bhi. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah, we're going to start. I can ask everyone please to come to the uh, chairs. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the kids. Where are the kids? It's blackmail. This is blackmailing. Subhanallah. <laughs> so sit down first and get shocked, inshallah. Can you get can you get the kids from outside, inshallah? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Inshallah, we're going to start the halaqa. And uh, today is part three of the Guiding Stars series that we started a few weeks back. And last week, actually, we started, it was Guiding Star number two. We actually a, started a family, the blessed family. And we started the first member of the family. Now, participation means chocolate, to make it easy, or candy. Please participate, and we'd like everyone to participate, inshallah. Okay, remind everyone and refresh everyone's mind why this series. Okay, why this series about Sahaba? Number one is because we have been commanded to love the companions, right? And to pray for mercy, to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on them. Also, companions are inheritors of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knowledge. And also, they are the teachers and the carriers of the deen. Quran and Sunnah and also we have been commanded to follow them and take them as role models so this is the reason for the name guiding stars they are our guiding stars or uh, uh, role models these are the the main uh, references that we use Ustul Ghaba is the, my main reference then Siyar Alam and Nubala then the others including Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim to confirm that authenticity of the chain of narrations okay is everyone ready for candy? No? You are? Okay, good. So we have some quiz for you there. It's not free. Candy is not free. Okay. Ready? Okay. Companion. Okay. A companion is multiple choice. A companion is anyone who met Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and believed in him. Or it's anyone who ate at least one meal with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or it is, is it? Anyone who met Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, believed in him and died on the state of Islam, or it's anyone who grew up with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and their friend. Which one? C. C? Who says C? C? Okay, how many ones say D? No D, no A's? C, okay. Here. You all choose, okay. <laughs> okay, a tough customer, don't come here again. <laughs> C, who said C? Yaqub. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. There's more candy coming, more candy coming. How much? Hussein? Any late? Oh. oh. What is Sarah? She was asking to get the candy as well. Oh, it's hard. I'm, I'm afraid to hit the sister. Can you come and take it? <laughs> no, you can't worry. Okay, next question. Next question. There are a lot of questions. Every slide almost has a question, okay? Okay. We're going to take one of these, one by one, and say which is yes or no, okay? Among the collective ranks, remember, remember last time what we say, or in the series, we said that are all the, pro, all the companions in the same rank, yes or no? No, not all the companions are in the same rank, right? Some companions have higher rank than others, based on what? Based on then, uh, when they believe, spending on the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fighting, defending the Prophet Muhammad. Okay, so... Is it among, among the ranking or the higher ranks of the companions that who was born before the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is that yes or no? No. Okay, good. Is it the one who or the, the rank is based on best in battlefield? Okay, what about earliest in accepting Islam? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. What about who had more money? The richest? No. Okay, okay. Take it easy. Who spent, struggled before for the Ibiya Treaty? Oh, sorry. Yes. yes. That's cheating. That's not counting. Okay. All right. Those who were born before, born in Ramadan. Is that the ranking? No? 
Okay, what about those who fought in the Battle of Badr? Yes. yes or no? Who said somebody yes, something no? Yes. You said no, you're wrong. Still, you take a candy. <laughs> okay, okay, we're going to give candy in a second. What about those Sahaba whose first name is Muhammad? Is that a good ranking or not? It doesn't matter, right? What about, oh, I skipped one. What about those who fought in the Battle of Uhud? Uhud. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you just got one, man. I'll give you one in a second. Okay, what about who, this, the companions who grew up as orphans? It's not a rank, it's not a rank. Okay, how about who pledged the uh, allegiance under the tree? Salih Hudaybay, yes. Okay. okay, good, so these are the rankings, some of them. So forget about the nose, and they say that not all the companions are the same because some of them did more stuff than others. Okay, good. You didn't take candy, come on. Who is didn't take candy? Uh, one more. Everyone only two okay. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Missed you. Okay, okay, get ready. More questions, okay? More questions. Just focus. Okay. Okay, more quiz. Okay, first question. How many were how many fought in the battle of Okay, good. Mahdi, Zagallah khair. Okay. Okay, when was the Battle of Badr? Which year? Okay, take more. Just sit. Okay. Huh? Second year. Okay. How many people were people or the Muslims in the Battle of Uhud? 700. What's the complete answer? Oh, that's for Zahid. <laughs> oh, I'll take you. Have a lot. I'll take you. Give you more. Don't worry. Zahid, this is for you. <laughs> okay, okay. Just, just, okay. How many? Okay, when was the Battle of Uhud? Third year. Okay, how many people pledge, uh, give the pledge to Prophet Muhammad under the tree? For between 14 and 1500. You're close. <laughs> you, are you sure? You can donate it to someone. <laughs> okay, Zakullah here. Okay. Okay. Among those who were given the glad tidings of Jannah is Talha ibn Ubaidillah. Is that yes or no? Yes. Okay, who said yes here first? Me. That's. I was saying, let take it. Okay. Let Hafsa bin Umar radiallahu anha is. One of the ladies of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes or no? Yes. yes. You, you take it, yes. Okay. Okay. Abdullah ibn Rawaha, radiallahu an, was the first ambassador in Islam. Yes or no? No. Okay. okay. Who said no first? What? I'm sorry. Girls, can you come forward, please? <laughs> Else it's going to be an accident. Come forward. Okay. And lastly, Lady Safiya bin Abdul Muttalib, the last star, the star of last year, uh, last last week, is a stepsister of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, so what's the answer? And and is that all the answer? And is correct. The answer. Cousin, how? Her mother, exactly. We we'll get to finish that in, in a second. So. Sayyidah Safiya bint, uh, bint Abdul Muttalib, she is the cousin as well as the aunt of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for two different rats. Okay, you remember who were, the, who were the first two stars in the series? First one was? Usab bin Ubayr, the second was? Safiya bint Abdul Muttalib, radiallahu anhuma jamia. Okay, today guiding star number three and we continue the blessed family that's close to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, we said the family is composed of, like, uh, contains our mother, Safiya bint Abdul Muttarib, radiallahu anha. Her son is Az-Zubir ibn Awam, radiallahu anha. Then her daughter-in-law is Sayyidah Asma bin Bakr, radiallahu anha. Then their grandson, the grandson of Sayyidah Safiya, is the son of both 
عبد الله الزبير بن عوام and اسماء بنت بنت ابي بكر is عبد الله بن الزبير all of them are sahaba and last time uh, there was uh, one brother or someone said uh, what about عروه بن الزبير عروه بن الزبير is a tabi'i he's not a sahabi he's a tabi'i and but he's a very well known scholar and he was one of the seven scholars in Medina there were seven highest ranked scholars yeah, among the tabi'in عروه بن الزبير is one of them but he was not a sahabi Okay, and last time when we started about to talk about this, when we say I told you that this here is confusing, right? Talk about the family. We said the Sayyidah Asma, this is what we said here. A Sayyidah Safiya bint Abdul Muttalib is linked to Prophet Muhammad Sallam through Abdul Muttalib, so she is his aunt through that channel. But her mother, her mother is Hala bint Wahd. And she is the sister of Amina bin Tuah. So in this case, she is the cousin of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from, from, from that channel. Then her son, Zubair ibn Awam ibn Khuwaylid, he is the direct cousin of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Ibn Ammatihi, through Sayyidah Safiya. But in the same time, his father, Al Awam ibn Khuwaylid ibn Asad, is who? Who is Al Awam ibn Khuwaylid ibn Asad ibn Abdul Uzza ibn Qusay? He has some connection to Prophet Muhammad also through that. Name Al Awam ibn Khuwaylid. Khuwaylid ibn Asad. Khadija. He is the brother of Sayyidah Khadija. So Sayyidah Khadija is also the, the aunt of Al Zubair ibn Awam. So he's linked to Prophet Muhammad or his house through two routes. Then Al Sayyidah Asma, the wife of Al Zubair ibn Awam. She is the daughter of Abu Bakr Siddiq عنها, and then they are all connected to Prophet Muhammad through Murrah. Remember here, you have Qusay uh, ibn Murrah. So Murrah is the connection between uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq who is from Banu Taymi. He is Taymi. Then Abdullah ibn Zubair of course is the, well, the son of both, both of them. Okay. So last time we spoke about Sayyidah Safiya radiallahu anha and today inshallah we'll talk about the son who is uh, Sayyidina Az-Zubair bin Awam radiallahu anha. What happened here? Okay. Okay. Sayyidina Zubair ibn Awam radiallahu anhu was born in Mecca. It's working, okay. And he was raised by his mom, Sayyidina Safiya radiallahu anha, when his father was killed in Harb al-Fujar. Harb al-Fujar was a very fa famous war that happened in, uh, before, before Islam. It was called Fujar because it was fought in the Ashhur al-Hurum. So basically they went to Ahl al-Nasi, they, they bribed them to change al Ashur Hurm for them and they started the wars that called Harb Fujar and the people of Mecca and Quraysh actually went in to intervene to try to stop it so during that time a lot of uh, people of Mecca were, were killed and um, among them is uh, Al-Awam ibn Khuwaylid the father of uh, Zubir ibn Awam he was known to be very tall well built very strong very very strong and you can see that in, in, as we see and he was the same age of Ali and Talha in some narration also Sa'ad ibn, Ab uh, Sa ibn Abi Waqqas so all of them were the youth of a Sahaba that basically grew and they were almost, almost the same year okay he was accepted Islam at a very young age and there was, there was a lot of discrepancy or like a very, very wide range of, of uh, uh, ra the, the, the range is wide in the book of Sirah is between as, as young as 8 and as old as 16, majority of scholars say he's about 12 years old. So he's accepted Islam at a very, very young age. And interestingly, he, was accept he accepted Islam after Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And this is something to keep in mind, subhanAllah. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu accepted Islam almost the same the next day or within two, year, within two days, he invited Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu to Islam and he accepted Islam. Then and almost on the, second, the same day or the next, the next day, he offered Islam to Az-Zubair bin Awam and he accepted Islam. So 
subhanallah, when you look at the, the 10 who were given the, uh, the, the glad tidings, out, eight out of them would actually accept Islam on the hand of Abu Bakr Siddiq. So it's like a different caliber of human being. Now, some narration or some books ranked as Zubair ibn Awam as the fifth of this or the sixth Muslim who ever accepted Islam. So it's very, his, his acceptance of Islam is very, very, very early. Fifth or sixth. Okay. Can we name the first Muslims ever? <laughs> MashaAllah. The first, no, first ever in rank. The first one. What is the first one? Uh, who, who accepted Islam on the head of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Accepted the message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Say the Khadija, that's number one. Say the Khadija. Okay. Okay, say the Khadija is the first one ever. Now, to be re in reality, some folks say that the first one who didn't accept Islam first or believed in Prophet Muhammad is Warqab bin Nawfal. Because he's the one who told them that whatever you have is the true revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I wish that I'm a young man so that when you're your, your people kick you out, I'll be a believer in him. So he believed in him before anyone else knows that he's even prophet. Right? But he died soon after that, so it's, it's not listed. But Sayyidah Khadija is the first one. Okay, who's the second person? Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. His closest friend, closest companion. He's very short. Who? Uh. Okay, who said Sayyidah Khadija first? Okay. Oh, all right. And then Abu Bakr Siddiq, who said Abu Bakr Siddiq? Okay, who, who's next? On youth, in youth. Who are the first in youth? Sayyidina Ali, and who else? Sayyidina Ali, Zubair, from Awam, right? So actually they accepted Islam when they're very, very young age and then all very close to each other. Right? They are the same age, they accepted Islam very close to each other. Yeah, so Ali ibn Abi Talib and the Zubair, as I mentioned, they were, uh, they were uh, of the same age and they accepted very early, early age. Then from Al-Mawali is Zayd ibn Haditha radiallahu anhu. Who are Al-Mawali? What do you mean by Mawali? When you read it in the book, not servants. That's the correct definition of Mawali. No, not correct. Mawla is a freed slave. Zayd ibn Haditha was first a slave of Prophet Muhammad Sallam, then he released him. After that, he did make Tabani. But Al Mawla uh, have different definitions. But one of the definitions here, Al Mawali, is that they were slaves and then freed. Okay, Abdul Qadir, you said half the answer. Okay, then from slaves, who is the first one from slaves? Bilal radiallahu anhu, Zakallah khair. Can you catch this? No. <laughs> Stay where you are. Okay. Good. Okay. Then, as Zubair ibn Awam, he actually suffered an early Muslims from Quraysh, especially from his uncle. Do you remember last time when we spoke about the Sayyidah Safiyyah? There was some very distinct characteristic of Sayyidah Safiyyah. What was it? Very strong. Very, very strong and very... Which was actually very harsh. It was very harsh, very strict. She used to uh, discipline Zubair ibn Awam very, very hard, sometimes even punish him. And remember when I told you that one time she said a, uh, a, a few uh, uh, poetry, at that incident actually his uncle came to her and told her why you're punishing him or beating him like that. You're beating him as his enemy, not his mother. And she said, okay, whoever said I, 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 I hate him or hit him is a liar. That was his uncle. When he accepted Islam, that uncle took him and started punishing him because he accepted Islam. Subhanallah, hearts change completely. And some of the nation said that his uncle used to punish him in the way that he get him into hasir. You know hasir, like you have carpets made out of uh, 
what hasir is like like bamboo like style he used to put him inside the hasir turn it all around him and then burn the hasir from one side so he's actually choke under his the the, the smoke as, as a punishment who was raised by Sayyidah Safiya, who was very strict, very tough, did not budge. Right? So, as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was preparing him when he was at young age, through Sayyidah Safiya, what for what would come to him in the future. So, because of that tough way he was raised, that for him was like a breeze. Right? And did not budge. Then, there's some interesting narration that happened in Mecca. Remember, in the, what is the difference between Mecca, Mecca time and Medina time? In Mecca time, it was the time where Risala was revealed to Prophet ﷺ to build the Iman, the faith. And despite of all the harsh hardship and punishment that the Muslims received in Mecca for 13 years, they were commanded directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad وسلم, over and over and over, do not engage, do not defend yourself, do not even stand up for yourself, do not fight have patience, etc. That was the message in Mecca. However, there was one time that happened that out of the uh, hardship that Prophet ﷺ was seeing, there was a rumor that was spread that Prophet ﷺ was taken by the mushrikeen and to kill him. So as Zubair ibn Awam heard that and he automatically went to his house, he got his sword and then went out, right, between all the crowd with his sword out and then went in cutting all the crowd until he reached Prophet Muhammad and he said, Prophet Muhammad saw him, what are you doing here? I said, I, I hear that you were taken to be killed, so I came to defend you. That was, he was around 12 years to 14 years old, went to Prophet Muhammad and he was the first one to take a sword and stand up in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even before the qital was made legal at that time. At that time, Prophet Muhammad prayed for him and for his sword. And that's the, the narration that was reported by al Dhahabi, uh, Ibn Athir, etc., about this, about this incident. Then his companionship, he sh shadowed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam since his Islam. He was very close to him. He learned a lot, right? Almost like his shadow for him. And you read this seer, I found, okay, sometimes Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi sleeping somewhere and the Zubair was standing outside as a guard. Uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went somewhere and Zubair was there. So he was with him most of the time. Now, yet, when you look at the books of Hadith or the books of Sirah, there were very, very little narrations of Az Zubair ibn Awam. Why? Can anyone think why? It was like someone who was a shadow of Prophet Muhammad from almost believed, accept Islam at, at year zero. So 23 years of, of da'wah with Prophet, he was shadow like him. He was like, with him like a shadow in wars, in, in struggle, in fights. But do we look at this at books of Sirah, very, very few ahadith. Can anyone guess why? No, he died after Prophet Muhammad. Okay, because of this hadith. He was asked by his son, uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Zubair one time, he told him, why don't I hear you narrating a hadith, right, or, or, or uh, narrations about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Despite that, you were among the Prophet Sallallahu all the time. Like Abu Huraira, for example, joined or, or the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu for three years. Zubair ibn Awam was 23 years. Why did you not share that? Because actually, he said that one time, I hear Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, Man kathab alayya muta'ammidan, I hear Prophet Muhammad said that whoever tells a lie about me deliberately, right? And actually, in another narration, deliberately is not there. Let him take his place in hellfire. So he was, he, was, he was fearful to get into hellfire if he once said something that Prophet said and he was wrong. So out of his wara, out of his fear, out of his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hauled off from narration or telling about the stories of Prophet Muhammad. Okay. The Zubair ibn Awam was one of the folks who migrated to Abyssinia in the first migration. Remember anyone remember when? The 
It was year after, not Hijrah, after Da'wah, from Da'wah, which year was it? No, no, now before it. <laughs> it's close, it's about five, year five. I'm Qadr, I'm sir, okay. Qadr, oh, sorry. Okay, so he migrated with the Muslims to Abyssinia out of the, the, the all the punishments that they have feared, they have seen on the hands of, of Quraysh. Interestingly, because remember now, look at these themes, and I would like you to build that theme of Zubair ibn Awam over time. Remember in Mecca, he took his sword to go to defend Prophet In Abyssinia, in the, in the first uh, migration to Habasha, they only lasted a few months. But what happened, something happened, something interesting happened at that time, it was narrated by Umm Salama radiallahu anhu. At that time, she was there and she was the wife of Abu Salama, right, in, in, uh, in Abyssinia. During that time, when he went there in, in Abyssinia, the king, who was the king of, uh, of Al Habash at that time, Abyssinia, Al Najashi. And he was a defender, he was a good person, he defended Muslims. During that time, there was a coup against him. There was a, someone who revolted, one of his generals revolted against him and want to, wanted to kick him out and take his place. So Al Najashi went out with a, a big army to fight and they crossed the river Nile. Um Salama radiallahu anha in her, her narration said that we Muslims at that time in Abyssinia, we were fearful that if that coup worked, we would have been suffering very badly by the, the new regime because we don't know what, how they're gonna, they're gonna uh, they treat us. While El, uh, El Najashi was known to be very just king, so they were fearful. So they would cross the river Nile, the, 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 uh, the, the battle was on one side and the Muslims were on the other side. So they said, okay, who can go and get us some information or news about it? Sayyidina Zubair ibn Awam, he was like again young person at that time, he didn't even think twice. So they get him Qirba. Qirba is like a... Hmm? Not water, yeah, but it's like made out of, of skin, right? It's like a water uh, container made out of skin and they blow it for him. So he uses it as a float. And then he crossed the river Nile and then went into the army as observer to get the news. And then during that time, all the Muslims were praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give victory to al Najashi. Then Zubair ibn Awam, they saw Zubair ibn coming from far away and then just waving for them that have good news that al Najashi defeated his, his enemy and then he came back. So he, did, he was not fearful to jump into the battle. He could have been killed at that time, right? So again, thank, keep this to build the theme in your head. Then after that, migration to Medina. So he returned back from the first, uh, first, first Habasha migration and he stayed in Mecca. He did not go there in the second time. And then he shadowed Prophet Muhammad all that time until he migrated to Medina. Now, one thing before that, remember in the migration to Medina, most of the Muslims used to migrate to how? in secret. Ones or twos, they migrated secret, right? He, ones here, two here, one, one his wife, etc. Until, until Umar al Khattab came and then he, when he migrated, he went out in public and then there were 20 of we Muslims actually migrated with him. The narration said that there are only three people who migrated in public, having the sword out, fear, fear of nothing, actually they were actually insulting the, 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 the mushrikeen. Umar al Khattab is one of them. The second one is Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib and the third one is Zubair ibn Awam But he migrated after Prophet Muhammad Now, when they, when they migrated to Medina, before, like a, shortly before migration, actually he got married to a Sayyidah Asma ibn Abi Bakr And when they migrated, she was pregnant at that time. Now, when they went to Medina, I think Brother Fauzi mentioned that in his seerah, there was a rumor that the, 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 the Jews spread in Medina that we have made some sort of magic, black magic, on the Muslims that they will never have any offspring in Medina. And subhanAllah, Sayyidah Asma gave birth to Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anh, in Medina and he was the first born from Al-Muhajireen in Medina 
after Hijrah, and then Muslims were very happy about that and actually joy, were joyful because that actually disgraced the, the, the Jews that were spreading rumors about Muslims. Now, in the Battle of... Now go to, let's move forward to the Battle of Badr. When was the Battle of Badr and how many Muslims fought there? We just had it in a revision. 30 what? 30. 30 what? 300. 300 and... Close. 3 and 13. Okay. And when was it? Which year? Second. Second. Anyone like chocolate here? No chocolate? Second year, second year. She said it first. Catch. Whoa. Okay, so to second year, and we said the number of Muslims at that time between 300 and 315. Okay. Now, at that, in that battle, if you remember, I mean, if you attended the Sira, okay, I'm going to borrow this from Brother Fauzi. What was unique, or how was, oh, sorry, I was praying. How was, as the Ibn Awam al mentioned in Battle of Badr, he had some special mention. Special mention, spe specifically to the Ibn Awam. Remember Talha was a special mention in Uhud. The Ibn Awam had a special mention in the Battle of Uhud, uh, Battle of Badr. Choice? What choice? Multiple choice. I know. Were they the ones that uh, went to kill on, on their people? No, no. Something happened at the beginning of the battle, even before it starts. No, okay. Let me show you this. Do you remember this? Let's give you a hint. No, I know, but what, what is this? Sure. But this gives you a hint. What's the special mention of Zubair ibn Awam in the Battle of Badr? Look at this. What do you have here? Shield, you have what? Brother Fauzi, welcome back. <laughs> what is the hint? Your students are not... Uh, <laughs> not I'm disappointed. They don't study. <laughs> he mentioned that specifically, right? He, had, he was wearing what? Huh? Al-Imam al-Safra. And then what? What, what, why is this unique? So orange. It's you. you. <laughs> who who mimicked as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi Who helped the, the the Prophet and companions in the battle? Angels, and the angels were revealed or were sent down. على سيما الزبير الرسول صلى الله قال الملائكة الرسول سبحانه وتعالى أرسل الملائكة على سيما الزبير سيما means the same way the same like his, his face his figure and the way he looks the way he, he wore and they were all wearing the same عمامة صفراء like him so that's a special mention like now think about this right all the ملائكة that were sent by Allah سبحانه وتعالى have the, the, the figure and the way that specific person looks this person should be very special, right? Another thing, he was actually one of two knights. In some, some narration that he was only knight in Battle of Bad, and some narration that he was one of two. Okay? There were only two horses in some narration. One narration said he was only one. The narration that said he was one of two, the second person was Maqdad ibn Amr, or Maqdad bin Aswad. Actually, the right correction is Maqdad ibn Amr, because ibn Aswad, that was uh, his adoption name. So Al Zubair and the Maghdad were two knights only at that time. Or at least, if it's the other nation, he was only the only knight at that time. So what kind of honor is that for Al Zubair Ma'awan of Allah? In that battle, it was mentioned that he had two dents scar in his chest. Imagine dents scar. It's not on the scar. No, it was dent. And it's, so the narration is, subhanAllah, very, and also his sword had dents in it. The narration from his son was very interesting that uh, Urwa ibn Zubair radiallahu anh, said that the, the shoulders of his father had three dents. On one of them, they were like a very, like very big that he used to his, enter his finger in it. So imagine how big is that. Two of these dents, he got them in 
uh, uh, the day of Badr and one he got it in the day of, uh, of Al Yarmouk later on. Right? So, what that would tell you? Someone who got three dents, very, very big dents in his shoulders and still was fighting and continue, right? He didn't just do, okay, Badr of Badr, I did it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave all my sins. I have, that's it. I'm retiring and staying home, right? He did not do that. Then in the Battle of Uhud, Okay, when was the Battle of Uhud? Some chuckle guys, we slept. Third year. Three, no. Okay. Okay, so as the women Awam fought in this battle with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you remember the Battle of Badr, this is, sorry, Uhud, just Brother Fauzi, Allah here spent like six weeks on it. So you should remember every single details. After beginning the battle was what? The Muslims were victorious. Then, subhanAllah, for a wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wished, things, the table turned to give lessons to us and to do its companions. Then, after the battle, something happened. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose 70. He picked, hand-picked 70 out of the companions to go and follow the pagans. He picked 70. One of them was Zubair bin Awam So he did not pick anyone, right? There's hadith that uh, say, uh, 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 and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran on these 70 people who really got, got harshly punished in, surat, uh, in, in battle of Uhud. They were uh, badly defeated. They were very tired. They went home disappointed, all that stuff. Imagine all this psychological pressure from being defeated in a battle and all that turmoil that we went through and then immediately didn't even have rest and then went out to chase the, the, the disbelievers. And they accepted the call of Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in them these ayat الَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِلَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَصَابَهُمُ الْقَرْحِ This ayat was revealed in these 70. And as Sayyida uh, Aisha radiallahu anha told told Urwa ibn Zubair, the son of Zubair ibn Awam, and of course her nephew, told her that your both fathers fought in that battle. So his immediate father is Abdullah ibn Zubair, and who's the other father? Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So she was telling him that both your fathers fought in that, were among these 70 people, right? So in addition to being the people of Badr, the people of Uhud, they also were among the Top 70 chosen by, by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And interestingly, when you, uh, like, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always had like, like a, 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 a group of people, like Allah here, group, yes. Very, very sincere group that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when things are very tight, he falls back to that group. And among them was Zubair ibn Awam, and again, prove, proven over and over again. In the battle of the trench, Al-Ahzab, that would come later uh, in the Seerah. When was the battle of Al-Ahzab? Battle of Al-Ahzab. Not second, not third. Fourth. Fifth. Fifth. Brother Fauzi, welcome back. <laughs> okay. Okay, something interesting happened, actually, a special mention to Zubair ibn Awam radiallahu Now, remember this because Brother Fauzi will ask you these questions as well, right? Okay, he fought with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in Al-Ahzab. Now, remember, the, the, again, it didn't come, but you will know in the more details that this is Medina. From the north, uh, from the south, Medina is protected by the mountains and very hard to come to it. There are also forts of the, uh, of the uh, Jews in the, in the south. And then the Muslim, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and the Muslims, they dug a trench in the north to prevent the Quraysh from entering them. That was like a siege to the Muslims, right? Now, the special mention is that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went out three times, three times in a row. And he seeked volunteers to go out to check or get him back the news of the, the people, people of Quraysh. And the, the three out of three of them was a Zubair ibn Awam 
He said, who among us will go and get us the news from, from the people, from the from the, from, Shaki, from Quraysh? And then three times, Zubair immediately, he asks a question, Zubair stands up, me, and he goes, get him the news and come back. Then later, Prophet asked the same question, who can get us the news of the, of the, of the people? He said, me again, and then did that three times. When he came back, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that said that very famous hadith that قال إن لكل نبي حواريا وإن حواري حواري الزبير Each prophet has a disciple and my disciple is الزبير بن عوام رضي الله عنه So that was said in that, in that story and our, or that incident and that was narrated in Al-Bukhari So again, give him more stars, right? I mean, we're building his history more stars for Azubir and Awam In the conquer of Mecca, again, this will come later. When was it? You can cheat to have the, <laughs> the answer there. <laughs> Too small. Okay, next time I'll get it bigger. <laughs> eighth. <laughs> eighth year. Okay, who said eighth? Yaqub, you don't say anything. I just use your hand, right? SubhanAllah. <laughs> okay, it was an eight. Huh? Oh, sorry. Did you say eight? Any of you said eight? I need you to participate. Just say anything. Hey, there you are. Oh. Okay, next time I throw anything, someone grabs Yaqub, okay? <laughs> okay. So in, in the in the conquer of Mecca, Prophet Muhammad sent or he divided the, his troops into, uh, into multiple, multiple uh, platoons. You can see that he commanded Khalid bin Walid to go around Mecca from the back to make sure that no one, uh, like any insurgents go against him. Then from, that would be what, from the, from the west, Qais ibn, uh, ibn Sa'd ibn Ubadah. Then you have uh, Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah from the north. Then from Al-Maysara, Maysara al-Jaysh, or from in this case, we're going to be the east, as Zubair ibn Awam radiallahu So he was the, who he led a platoon that came from, from Al-Maysara, from the left, going into this place called Al-Juhun, al Al-Juhun, al yeah, Al-Juhun, Al-Hujun, Al-Hujun. And there, here, he, he came in first, he implanted the, the raya of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and stayed there until Prophet Muhammad sallallahu came in and joined him. So he was the one entrusted to go to that place first, secure it for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he was very entrusted by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa over and over and again, especially when hardship is there. He is one, who was one of the, the, the people on the top of the list. Uh, the one thing I missed here is that before Fatih Mecca, before the conquer of Mecca, something happened. I think uh, Brother Fauzi mentioned that usually before battles, I think he mentioned that before battles, usually Prophet Sallam used to tell the companions where they're going, right? Sometimes where you're going to, to prepare themselves, etc. Especially before the conquer of Mecca, Prophet Sallam kept that super secret. Nobody knows about it and all the preparation was secret. One thing that happened is that, and this is a well-known uh, story, that one of the believers, one of the Muslims, sent a message to Quraysh to give him a breach about the news that the, the Prophet is coming with the, with the army to conquer them. You, does anyone know his name? It's one of the companions. Actually, one of the good companions. Yeah. He was saying, Umar, uh, he told Prophet Muhammad let me go and let me uh, kill him because Nafaqa dots. But, but what's his name first? <laughs> you remember that story? Brother Haysam, who, who, who was, was about? Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a. So one of the, as I mentioned here, is that in this, Prophet Muhammad kept that secret. I will keep that details for Prophet Fauzi to give why the behind it. But one of the com good companions sent a message to the, the Quraysh that Prophet Muhammad is getting out with a big army to attack you or conquer you. So Prophet Muhammad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the wahi to Prophet Muhammad, uh, Prophet Muhammad tell him that this is happening. So Prophet Muhammad sent 
الزبير بن عوام and زبير بن عوام علي بن ابي طالب and المقداد to grab that lady and stop that message from reaching. So again, زبير بن عوام علي المقداد. You can hear these names: الزبير علي المقداد طلحة. These are the super like uh, the Avengers team of Prophet Muhammad that these are the super duper team of Prophet Muhammad right the 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 brave team right brave teams. sorry the brave army the brave army yes 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 okay and I mentioned that he was the one who installed the 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 uh, the flag uh, of Prophet Muhammad then after the death of Prophet Muhammad something very interesting happened immediately after the death of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What was it? Something huge. Al-Ridda. Right? Hurub al-Ridda. Al-Ridda. Ridda means what? Some of the tribes that claimed or at least gave Islam or gave bayat to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on Islam. They said, okay, we're not Muslims anymore. We're not going to pay zakat. We're not gonna. So this is called Al-Ridda or the movement of Ridda. Again, we'll come in more details. Now, during that time, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq who just became Khalifa, and it was like a few days, the things are going, not going in the right direction, so there's a lot of pressure. So, Abu Bakr Siddiq sent multiple armies across the, the Arab Peninsula to stop this movement very early. And you can see here, sent uh, a lot of his, uh, the well-known uh, leaders, Khalid ibn Walid, Al-Ala ibn al-Hadrami, uh, Hudayf ibn Muhsin, etc., sent a lot of troops different ways in the Jazeera al Arab to stop that. Now, in Medina, Abu Bakr Siddiq is there, Umar al Khattab, the Kibar al Sahaba, and then they needed a troop or a team, right, or a commandos team to defend Al Medina, right? So, uh, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq appointed Again, see, look at the look at the names. You can see here the theme. Zubair ibn Awam, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Sa'ad ibn Abi, ibn Abi Waqqas. They were among the, that commandos team that was protecting al Medina and protecting the center or the capital of al Khilafah at that time. So because he was, again, trusted or entrusted to protect that. And he fought with, Prophet, with Abu Bakr Siddiq. Okay. Moving forward to the Battle of Yarmouk, that is now moving forward. That was toward the end of, uh, sorry, uh, before the death of Abu uh, Siddiq and then at uh, the beginning of Khilafat Umar. When was it? Battle of Yarmouk. Huh? 13, and who is against? Against whom? Roman, the Byzantines, right? So, Byzantine Empire. It was actually 15, right? Huh? I'm will take the candy because he said it right. <laughs> Everybody. So, yeah, it was the year 15, and that was the, the battle. It was a very famous battle in the history, Islamic history. And that was against the Byzantine Empire. It was actually one of the battles that collapsed the Byzantine Empire, right? And then it was like one of the big, or big battles there. No, Abu Bakr Siddiq was only two years. Two years and a few months. Two years. Yeah. Then Umar al Khattab was about 10 years, right? Ten, uh, 13 years. When did Abu Bakr turn? 10th, right? Oh, 11th. Yeah. Prophet Sallam died in Rabi' al Awal in the 11th year, right? Yeah. 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 So, sorry, I mean, sorry, I misspoke. It was after the death of Prophet uh, of Siddiq at the beginning of the Khilafah of Umar. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. 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 Zakallah khair. Very good. Zakallah khair. But uh, good. He got he got good answer. Okay. So Azbir Awam was one of the great companions who fought in that battle, right? You can see that here. So you can see this here. This is Palestine, 
uh, Jordan, Syria here, and then the battle was in here uh, at the uh, close to the river of Al Yarmouk. Then he fought in that battle. Interestingly, there's some of the narration that during that battle he was relatively mid-age at that time, right? Kind of. And then there were a lot of knights at that time that were basically younger than him, etc. And then they approached him and said, okay, how about you lead, you lead us and then we go through the army. He said, okay, if I do that, you'll not be able to keep up with me. He said, no, no, we are with you, and etc. They actually joined him. They attacked the army. Of course, the Byzantine army was huge. He was able to zip through to the other side and they were not able to, to catch up with him and then have to go back. So again, that would give you how brave and how uh, brave, strong, and also talented in, 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 in that, in, 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 defend, in defense uh, armies, They're like armies and defense uh, games. Then going to the conquer of Egypt, right? Conquer of Egypt, anyone knows when? Rough. After 13, for sure. Huh? After that. It was in the 20th uh, Hijri. What's your name? Ali. Ali? Okay, catch this. Don't allow anyone to, to interrupt. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, who led, who, who led the conquer of, of Egypt? Amr ibn Asr al Take it when he wakes up. Okay, now, here's what happened in, in, in the conquer of Egypt. Umar ibn Khattab sent an army headed by Amr ibn Asr They went to Egypt. They uh, tried to conquer it. They couldn't for some reason, and things were very slow. Then they seized Hesn Babylon, the, the Babylon uh, fort, fortress. And it was very long uh, uh, siege, and they were not able to conquer it. So Amr ibn al-Asr al and this, this is very interesting, this is a very big wisdom for that. He sent a, a message to Umar ibn Khattab and told him, okay, I cannot make it and I need some support. Send me some more troops. So Umar ibn Khattab sent him, okay, I'm sending you 4,000 men. At the head of each 1,000, there is one man that's equivalent to 1,000. Okay? So one of these men was Azub ibn Awam. Right? The others... No, Qaqa was not in there. No. Qaqa was in Qadisiyya and the other... The... Oh. Okay, you know the rest. Anyone knows the rest? I didn't have it here. So Azubir al Awam is one. The other name, I, one of the names I kept mentioning over and over. Oh, huh? Al Maqdad. Okay, Azubir al Awam, Al Maqdad. Wa uh, Ubaid ibn Samit, Wa Maslama ibn Makhlad. These are four that Umar ibn Khattab al Dalahan sent on top of the head as leaders for the, for, for the, for the army. And he told them that you have 4,000 people. But on top of that, you have four people. Each one is four at four thousand. You have like eight thousand. I gave you eight thousand people. But he didn't let it go like that. Again, just think about the leadership of Omar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu and the balance that he, or the, the 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 glasses that he wears to look at things. Any other leader say, okay, you have good troops. I will give you more, and that's it. I give you more people. That's the solution for the the problem. But he doesn't look at it this way. He he analyzes the things from the side of. Islam and Iman. And he said, okay, why did, why, why were not able to, to conquer? Right? Even with that, I mean, they had, the Muslims had even smaller, smaller uh, armies and were able to conquer bigger armies. So why is it hard for you? So this is why when he sent him that, before even telling him that I'm sending you 4,000 with one, four, uh, uh, in addition to uh, four uh, times 1,000 each, he told him, I advise you to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his, uh, 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 his, his help. And actually in the beginning of that, you say, I don't see the reason or any reason for you not to be able to conquer in Egypt except, except that you forgot about Al-Akhirah and you started thinking about dunya. I was talking to Sahaba, remaining of the Sahaba and Tabi'een, right? And the great Muslims. 
He told him that you forgot about the akhirah and then start, start thinking about dunya. Huh? And because of that, because of now you love dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it hard for you to conquer Egypt. So before you, when I send you, when these 4,000 people plus four arrive to you, take them, put them in front of the army, have the whole army make wudu, pray together, then have him give khutbas to encourage the army and to remind them to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you victory. Then what happened, subhanAllah, is, is one of the, the, the blessings of a Zubair ibn Awam is that, and that because of the fortress is very high and we're not able to conquer it, he said, okay, I'm going to go in. Actually, he climbed the fortress. He went on top of the, the wall. There's some two narrations. One narration said when he went on the top, before even jumping in, he just say Allahu Akbar and then the Muslims say Allahu Akbar. So the people inside thought, okay, there was a breach and then they ran away. And another narration said, okay, when they, and of course he jumped down and opened, opened the gates. Another narration is that when he jumped over and they say Allahu Akbar and then they hear that, the people inside the fort, they say, okay, okay, now they're coming in, so they're going to kill us. So actually they opened the, the gate and went out and negotiated the surrender terms. So again, this is a blessing of Az Zubair ibn Awam radiallahu anhu. Okay. Something happened very serious in the Islamic history, which is the death of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And that was a turning point between things that are un under control and then things out, get, out, get out of control. When Umar ibn Khattab was stabbed, he ordered to have a shura, consultation, right? Among six companions. He said, okay, you have six companions. These are the names. They have to sit down together and pick one of them. Okay? Can anyone name them? Brother Zahid. You got five, right? Saad ibn Abi Waqqas. Six candies, six? I'll give him one big one. <laughs> okay, so yes, there were Uthman ibn Affan, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Zabir ibn Awam, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, and Saad ibn Abi Waqqas. Why all these six? What's common between the six? They are the only remaining from the ten, right? They are the remaining from the ten who are still alive. So Umar ibn Khattab did not entrust anyone else except those who are... Okay. When he, when he actually was he's asked by his son, why don't you appoint someone else or what did you answer? How do you answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he asked you, what did you leave? And say, okay, I left the, 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 the amr or the, the situation between these. Right? If these are not able to get something, someone good, who else can do that? Right? Exactly, nobody. Okay, so I answered that. Then, again, that will come. Maybe I'm not sure if that's going to come in that series or, series or not. But what happened is, when they sat down, they sat down in a, a house. Actually, they were, they were entrapped in a house. They, were, they got into a house and then they were commanded to leave him the, none of them leave the house until they uh, agree on one of them and then the uh, it's not mentioned okay then through negotiation they stayed there for three years uh, sorry three days so three days they were negotiating back and forth and none of them wanted to jump in or uh, they were not able to come to conclusion then they said okay how about we shrink it down from six, go to each one of them and see who can delegate his opinion or, 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 or situation to others. So that would happen here as Zubair. He said, okay, I give or I delegate my, my decision to Ali ibn Abi Talib. What's the link between Ali and Zubair again? Cousins, yes, they're cousins and they're also in the same age, right? They grew up together. Then Talha ibn Abaydullah gave his he delegated his, his, his decision to Uthman ibn Affan. Then Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas gave, delegated his decision to Abdul Rahman ibn Affan. Then 
uh, actually I made a mistake. Uh, Abdul Rahman Auf gave his delegation to yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, no. Saad, Saad Mabakas gave his delegated his opinion to Abdul Rahman Auf. So now we have three. Then the, between the three, Abdul Rahman Auf said, okay, how about it's between both of you, and then we need to get some opinions from the from the from the Muslims. So Abdul Rahman ibn Auf spent, he said, some nation spent almost a whole day, a whole night, or maybe more than that, just going from one house to another, asking them between Ali ibn Abi Talib and Uthman, who would the Muslims prefer? And then he came back to, to these two and he said, okay, based on majority of the feedback, no one, or among the, like the majority of opinions, no one can put Ali in front of Uthman. And then Uthman was giving the bay'ah based on that. But if going back to our star, his name was there again. So it's not only in the armies, it's not only in uh, leading armies. Actually, he was nominated by Umar al-Khattab, meaning that he's entrusted to lead maybe the whole ummah as a potential khalifa after Umar al-Khattab. Okay? Now, the death of uh, Zubair ibn Awam, radiallahu anhu, I will talk about this briefly for a reason because this has happened during the Al Fitna Al Kubra. Al Fitna Al Kubra is not, it's hard to talk about it. It really deserves uh, its own platform, right? It's not, it's not right to discuss it here. However, this happened during the Al Fitna Al Kubra. He was, he was killed in the year 36 and in, in the Battle of Al Jamal, Ma'arakat Al Jamal. Again, there's too many narrations right and left talking about what happened during that because again, there's this fitna after the, the death or after the killing of Uthman ibn Affan. Ali ibn Abi Talib was uh, uh, chosen or given the bay'ah to be Khalifa, but he wanted to uh, slow down because there was a revolt in Medina. He didn't want to rush to, to, to judge the killers who came from multiple, uh, multiple places. However, some Sahaba said, no, we have to take Al-Qasas right away. And anyways, it is a lot of details actually deserves a lot of like its, its own series. Then m most authentic narration said that Sayyid Aisha radiallahu anha, along with Zubair ibn Awam and Talha ibn Ubaidillah went out and their intention was to go to stop any kind of war or, or, or army, to basically intervene between the, the, uh, the fighting troops. But subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wished for something to happen. Zubair ibn Awam met Ali ibn Abi Talib and then uh, they talked and then he was actually turning back to Medina. Uh, some of the folks he, who did not want to, for the war to stop came to him while he was praying and then killed him from the back. And this person, was, this killer is called Ibn Jarbuz, killed him while he was playing, uh, praying. Praying. Okay. That was his death, uh, Now, very long battle. His name mentioned a lot in the seerah. Let's, let's go back to our exercise. Now I need everyone who is half asleep or took a nap to woke up and then let's work on this. I think this is gonna be fun. Okay, this is the exercise, quick check, okay? Remember this, this, this is the checklist that we follow to check where is our star, right? On that one. Okay, let's take. The first one, he's one of the people who are earliest in accepting Islam. Yes or no? Yes. 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 He was one who spent or struggled before Hudaybiyah Treaty. Yes. yes. He is a Muhajiri, from the Muhajirin, so he has a upper step above uh, Al, uh, Al Ansar. Yes or no? Yes. yes. He's one of the people, people who attended Badr. Yes. Oh. Sorry, wrong direction. Who is one of the people of Uhud? Yes. Okay, he was the one who gave a uh, pledge allegiance under the tree. Sir Hudaybiyah. Yes, of course. He was a professor. With prophet. He was one of the ten who were giving glad tidings of Jannah. He was one of the ladies of the house of Prophet Muhammad Sallam. Of course not. And he was giving specific uh, glad tidings from Prophet Muhammad Sallam. All the dimensions that we mentioned, right? There's a lot of hadith specifically for us Zubair. We mentioned some of them. And Al-Hawari, Rasulullah and Glad Tiding. And actually in a specific hadith, Prophet Muhammad said that Talha and Zubair are my neighbors in Jannah. So that's huge honor from 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is knowing not only entering Jannah, he knows exactly where he lives. <laughs> so before we still alive. Subhanallah. Okay. Everyone will take care of the after that. Okay, it's gonna be open uh, open buffet. Okay. Now this is the other exercise and last exercise in tonight. Okay. Which of these characteristics, right, we should assign or take as Zubair ibn Awam as role model for us? So is it wisdom, intelligence, calmness, selflessness, patience, endurance, knowledge, negotiation, determination, leadership and coaching, sharpshooter like baby, uh, dedication, bravery, uh, humbleness, uh, self-discipline, piety, etc. Which one of these? Maybe it could, could be more than one. Bravery. Okay, what else? Endurance. Okay, what else? Ladies, girls, any? Of course. But bravery, of course, this is, uh, there's no doubt about that. What else? Huh? But he was a leader, of course. But what but is distinct him from the others? Right? So bravery for sure. Right? Dedication. Dedication, self discipline. How about uh, selflessness? Selflessness. Right? He jumped into the water to go to get the uh, the news. He Prophet Salim asked for volunteers three times to go into the other side. He went three times, right? He was he he, he got his sword and went to defend the Prophet Sallam even in Mecca time before the the, the, the the war. Huh? All of them bravery, but yeah. So anyway, so bravery, I will add that to the table, inshallah. Okay, that's it for tonight. Jazakumullah. Inshallah we'll meet next time to talk about his wife. Asma bint Abi Bakr Jazakumullah khairan, jazakumullah khair, subhanakallah wa bihamdik, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, wal asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr illa ladina amanu wa amilu s-salihati wa tawassaw bil-haqqi tawassaw bil-sabr.